Week 8 should be known as tight end week as we're seeing some of these young tight ends jump into situations where they're going to be seeing more workload and opportunity and that's going to allow us to pick them up off waivers at a discounted price to see whether or not they can hit for us in fantasy football. We've already talked about a few tight ends this week. We're going to talk about some more, which means I'm going to have more videos than this, but in this video, we're going to be talking about Trey McBride, tight end of the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to go over the news, the facts, the data, the advanced metrics, everything you need to feel whether or not you want him for your fantasy team. But what you need to do is click that subscribe button right now. Stop missing out on these deep dives. We're deep diving these players every single day. We're helping you set your lineups and everything else. Click that button. Stop missing out. Let's look into Trey McBride. First things first, Zach Ertz is going on injured reserve. He's going to be out for a bit. That means it's Trey McBride's season. He's going to be stepping up. He's going to be seeing targets. And that means he's going to have some games where he's going to be fantasy relevant. Everybody's looking him up. Everybody's asking me questions. Everybody's searching him online. And now we're going to have to look into Trey McBride. On the season, hasn't been super productive. 10 fantasy points in week 6. Snap share. 50%, 58%, 33%, 27, 49, 51, 37. Again, he's sharing the field with Ertz. So it's going to be off and on. He's got zero touchdowns on the season. So we're still waiting for him to score his first touchdown. Yards, his best game is 62 yards. So again, we're waiting for him to do some things on the field. But the tight end position has been log jammed by Ertz and who is now out. And we're looking for him to see a much larger workload. McBride, as of today, is rostering 5.4% of leagues on ESPN. And if you're looking at a tight end prospect, this might be your guy. I'm going to have more tight end videos out on a few more guys to look at off waivers. Those might be your guy. Or maybe it's Dalton Kincaid. Maybe it's Taysom Hill. Maybe it's somebody else. But Trey McBride's out there on waivers in a lot of leagues if you're interested in him. So we're going to go over the numbers, see if you want him. Here we go. Looking at the fantasy points per game this season. Hasn't been too great. Pretty much because he's sharing the field. Cardinals have been the Cardinals. Again, week six, he was a tight end one with 10.2 fantasy points. It does not take much to be a tight end one in fantasy. It does not take that much. If you're somewhere between the tight end eight to tight end 10 range and on any given week, you're only a few points away from being the tight end 25. That being said, you can shoot your shot on some of these players, shoot for upside on a matchup, and if you miss, you ain't missing too big because more than likely, they're not scoring much more than that tight end 25, tight end 20 player of the week, and you're not missing out too much. But if you're shooting for upside and they hit, you're going to hit big. That's the way you're going to do it. Really, a tight end one should be considered a top three to five tight ends, mostly top three of the week, because you're only getting a few performers at the position that's really worth anything in fantasy. It's a lot of fodder at the position, but still, we got some young guys to shoot a shot on. Trey McBride's one of them, and targets per game here, six, five, three, one, three, two. Those are going to open up. We're going to see him get more targets. We're going to see him get more opportunity. It's going to ramp up a little bit. He's in year two as well. So we got that rookie season out of the way. Usually it takes two, three, four years for a tight end to develop. So we're deeper into his developmental period. Maybe he can step up during this time where he's getting more opportunity. And now him versus Zach Ertz. I created this chart for you guys. Really get an idea of how much workload he could be increased by over these next few weeks. Snap share 64% to 42%. 42 snaps per game for Ertz, 29 for McBride. So expect that to really increase probably around the 50 range because some of the McBride snaps are going to go to Ertz, and that's going to increase it. Targets per game, 6.1 to 3. He might hit 6 to 10 targets per game off and on from the rest of the season, which is pretty solid for a tight end. Target share, look for him to bump around 15 to 20%. He's definitely going to be in double digits going forward. He's going to run a lot more routes, probably 20 to 25 per game, if not more. Route participation rate, look for that to hit around 70 to 75% for sure because they're going to want to use him in the passing game. Air yards per game, that's going to bump up as well. 
probably somewhere between 40 and 50 yards per game. Really depends on game script with those. He could be seeing deeper targets as his ADOT was 6.3 versus 7.7 .7 for Ertz. We could see him get some deeper targets as he's being used more, running more routes. But Trey McBride is in line for more workload, which could make him more productive for fantasy football. Looking at his college stats here, he finished his collegiate career with a bang. 1,121 yards and a touchdown for Colorado State in 2021. Had a large market share of the passing work. In 2019, had over a 20% market share of the team's passing production. I know that because I got him in some Debbie leagues during that time. When I saw his production was pretty high at a market share standpoint. In 2021, he led all tight ends and targets with 122 yards per route run. 2.78 in his final year, 2.6 in 2019. Not getting a tremendous amount of yak though. 7.2 yards after the catch per reception was in 2020, his best season. However, averaging 5.5 on his career with an 8.4 ADOT on his career as well. Doesn't get tremendous deep targets, but he is a tight end. You're going to work the short area. You're going to work the middle area. You're going to work the deep area. You're going to work all over the place at that position. But we know he can run routes. We saw that at the Senior Bowl. We saw that during his collegiate career. We see that a little bit during his NFL career. Pretty slick in the passing game. Moves well for his size. And again, he's a good pass-catching tight end who's in his developmental period who we're hoping that takes a step forward. And then looking at the market share production, the ownership of yards in the passing offense, at age 19 had almost a 20% market share of the team's passing production. Really went gangbusters at age 21. That was in 2021, that best season. Again, he is very, very ahead of schedule when it comes to his college production. That means he could translate quickly to the NFL game for a tight end. That could be year two, year three. He's getting his opportunity now. That could be now. Really depends on how the offense flows and how he runs with this opportunity. But looking at this offense, they're running 65 plays per game, 38 pass plays, 27 rush plays. So about middle of the road per NFL standards, 25.1 seconds between plays, ranked sixth in the NFL. Kyler Murray looks like he's going to be back soon. The pace of play will increase with them back unless he's got a ramp up time. Also, he likes to throw it short a little bit. That could lean heavily for Trey McBride as the tight end could be seeing targets there. Also, Rondell Moore, of course. But Trey McBride's looking like he could be seeing a huge bump up in target share. Could be getting more opportunities, running more routes. And with Ertz out as the guy second in targets on the team, we could see him be second in targets going forward as well, which could be a huge bump to his fantasy value as you play the matchups with him. Looking at the Cardinals' schedule here, not the greatest, but the Cardinals just getting weird game scripts. They're one of those teams that on any given Sunday, they can produce fantasy points. And then on the next Sunday, it's just an ugly game. That's just how they are. Matchups with the Browns are ugly ones that you see with tough defenses. You kind of want to lean against. But still, this team is scrappy, and they can really turn a number out in any situation but again looking at the schedule going forward not super beneficial but he's on waivers he's free he's a free pickup who's stepping into volume and you want to chase that volume if he starts getting six targets per game five targets per game on the low then that's a tight end you're going to be interested in because there's going to be some stability there with some upside that you're going to like you need a tight end with upside. That's why you need him. You need a tight end to play the matchups with. You're streaming tight end. He's going to have some matchups here in the near future that you're going to be interested in. You're going to see him run more routes. That's going to get you very inquisitive. However, you do not need to be rostering more than one tight end on your roster unless you're in a tight end premium league or your league has some weird rules around the tight end. You don't need more than one tight end. You don't need a backup tight end. You do need a tight end that's stable with the upside or you're streaming. You might be good at tight end. You may not need to pick up a tight end. Half your league probably does not need to pick up a tight end. The other half may want to look at tight end and play the matchups and see going forward. This may not be a video for the now. This might be a video for three weeks later when you're playing matchups and streaming, knowing that, hey, Trey McBride stepping in this situation, 
Things are ramping up now. He's getting more opportunity. Maybe I try him in my lineup this week as a streaming option because tight ends that don't hit don't score much less than tight ends who are ranked tight end 10 to 8 in scoring, tight end 12. They're not too far off. Usually on average about 5 points a week, 5 to 6. So really, if they bust on you on a weekly basis, it's not going to kill you if you're streaming the tight end position. So shoot for upside if you don't have one of those top tier tight ends. But that's really like how we want to play the position. But I feel like it's best to globally go over these tight ends and do a video on each one of them so you get an idea of what they're about and then stream them the way you want to stream them going forward throughout the season. Pick them up, drop them, play the matchups with them because that's how you should roll with the tight end position if you're not locked in with a stud like Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, or one of the other guys. If you're not locked in like that, you should be looking at the waiver wire, should be doing some streaming, playing the matchups, trying to better your team each week in the matchup department off the waiver wire to see what happens because you want to shoot for that upside because if you're not shooting for that upside and you're just getting like the tight end 10 to 12 each week, you're really not doing much better than the tight end 25. With that being said, you might as well try and go to the moon each week, try and play those matchups. Let me know what you think in the comments below when I hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.